You read the title, you know what this video is about. Let's just get into it. Roll the intro. Okay, so yeah, today I'll be showing you guys how to make songs for Friday Night Funkin'. If you don't know what Friday Night Funkin' is, have you been living under a rock? Okay, I'll explain it to you. Friday Night Funkin' is a rhythm game made by a very small game development studio. Uh, the game just blew up this year. It's been very popular on TikTok, YouTube, but yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure you know what it is. Just because of the fact that you clicked on this video. But yeah, today I'll be showing you how I made a track for Friday Night Funkin'. Yeah, I'll be showing you this. So yeah, let's just get into it. Yeah, get into it. Uh, now I'm just gonna start going through this project like element by element. So yeah, the thing that makes a Friday Night Funkin' track is never the background music. Don't get me wrong, they have a semi-distinct quality, all of them. I mean, they are pretty hip-hoppy. What? But, uh, yeah. One thing is that the background melodies are always, or most of the time, very like low-key, like in the back, just like this one. Okay, this is very simple and it's, and it's wet. It doesn't have any like, you know, punchy transients or anything. It's not in your face. It's pretty wide. The main focus of the Friday Night Funkin' tracks are always the vocals. So yeah, this is just a Sakura patch, uh, BL Doc Trumpet, if you want to use this yourself. Uh, I, there's no like heavy effects on it or anything. It's just, there's just a high pass filter here. But yeah, just don't look at the yeast. They, these are, I'm going to talk about these, I mean, now. <laughs> I have another variant of the same melody here. It's just the same one as before, but it has reverb on it from the serum effects and it's really on the wet side. So what I did here, why this is like it is, why it's so wet on the mix is that I got rid of every single transient there. If you can, you can just look here, like the decay and size is not that big. It gets rid of the transients. It just makes it way smoother. So I can do this. I'm gonna put a health beat gate on there or one slash two beat gate there and just i put the attack comp and the release up even more and uh the result sound is this uh that's just for the verse part to like give it more rhythm <laughs> so yeah next thing 808 Very simple, but the 808 is heavy, you might notice. The Friday Night Funkin' tracks have been, even now that week seven is out, have been having like some, uh, they have some hyper pop elements in them. If you don't know what I'm talking about, here's the week seven one. Just listen, listen to the snare. It's a very hyper pop-ish snare. A lot of the Friday Night Funkin' tracks are just like influenced by, you know, electronic music and yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool texture. Next one, the kick. Not reinventing music at all. Like this is not rocket science. It's a pretty basic, like pretty basic, like trap beat. Like the snare is that. It's just, <laughs> it's really basic. Now the hi hat. Nothing new, just very basic. But yeah, as I said before, the meat in these tracks is never the background beat. It's always the vocals. Okay, let's talk about arrangement a little bit. This is the drop part when you, when you actually start actually using your fingers. So, yeah. <laughs> so the vocals here are like in every Friday Night Funkin' track. The concept is call and response how the friday night funkin game works in general like the core thing of it is that or the core gameplay in it is 
I mean, it's, it's a rhythm game. Uh, but what makes it unique from like other rhythm games, at least that I I know of, I've never seen this actually before, is that it's a call and response. Like the enemy you're playing against first like sings the melody and then you sing it back or rap it back or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, th this is how it works. Like here, um, it's, it's two bars of the enemy uh, singing and then... <laughs> The boyfriend sings it back. I mean, that's how it works all throughout every single Friday Night Funkin' track. But yeah, here it's uh, two, 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 two. But when we get to the drop, it's actually four. I'm thinking about like gameplay at the same time that I'm making this track. So that when I make it four bars instead of two, it makes it so that it's not so fresh in your memory that what the enemy like just did and you're going to have to sight read if you don't know what sight read means just like google it it's a gameplay term in like rhythm games it means that you have to actually look at how the arrows are coming at you and you have to play them but it's just like yeah i mean the main thing here is that why it's longer is to increase difficulty basically <laughs> And again, just it, it's the same melody played back on kind of a different instrument, which is the boyfriend sound at this point. But Loki, how did you make the boyfriend vocals? That's a good question, and I have a simple answer. And the answer is sound fonts. If you're using FL Studio or any DAW that really has anything in it that supports the use of sound fonts, it's a pretty old technology, but how the sound font works is very simple. Once you have downloaded the sound font and put, put the sound font wherever you have all of your other sounds like packs and, you know, drum samples and everything, you just take the sound font and drag it in. It's gonna open direct wave. You just click OK and you're ready to use it. Link in the description to get the sound font. That's how I made the boyfriend. But how I made the enemy vocals is a little bit more complex. I have a serum patch here. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to tell you how to use serum. This is not a serum tutorial. But all you got to know is that it's an FM synth with the formant 1 filter. The formant filter here is to make it sound like it's a talking robot. And I mapped the note modulator to the cutoff and formant also on the wavetable position here. So every time I play a different note, the sound is a little bit, just a hint different every single time. But that's not all of it. I also layered it with uh, Analog Lab 5, Big Unison 2. These are like on them own, here's them with each other. It's a pretty meaty sound. There's no like uh, crazy effects on any of these. On the Analog Lab one, I have a hyper dimension and a compressor. Then I have Maximus on a gate. Makes the sound more snappy. There's like, there's like no long tails or anything. And uh, fresh air to add some high end. So yeah, I'm gonna talk, talk a little bit more about the arrangement and then I'm just gonna play the track for you. But here on the first verse or whatever you wanna call it. Uh, at the end of it is this. When we go here into the vocals, you can see that I've been, this whole time, I've been playing really near the root note of the song. A lot of the action is just happening here, around the root note. But here, what I do, uh, by the way, I'm just gonna tell you this right now. I'm not very good with, like, music theory, like, terms or anything. I don't know how to put this in the right word. Like, I don't know the right words for this, but what I did here is that I'm kind of playing kind of an exact half octave, like, up above the scale here to create tension. I mean, yeah, the, all I'm doing here or what I was trying to do was create tension and I achieved it. Not really knowing what the real terms are for this, but... I mean, you can feel it. You're like on the edge of your seat. You're like 
oh shit, what the fuck is happening here? And just a reminder, like, I'm thinking about gameplay. How is this gonna affect the gameplay? Is it gonna be an, an enjoyable level? Or is it gonna be, like, cool, epic, like, threatening, anything like that? But yeah, this is to create tension. And to, like, to pair this... <laughs> I put a Reese bass here that's playing the half octave up too, like... This thing here with the boyfriend-like response. The other melody layer off, and I uh, made this here. Which is just the normal drum pattern that I've made for this song. Took it half an octave down and I put a high pass filter on it and some reverb. The reason why I took stuff out here is just to these parts hit way harder. <laughs> Yeah, cool stuff. And okay, so the last thing I want to talk about. This kind of seems like the same old, same old what is like right here. But it's a little different. And again, gameplay in mind. So what this is, it's kind of the same thing that was like, was like right here. But this time it's way more complex. Like again, gameplay in mind, it's just more difficult. This all is just to make it like more difficult, more notes to play. <laughs> So yeah, that's about it. Uh, I'm gonna play the track now, like in a bit. But uh, if you found this video helpful, uh, if you have any extra questions, like be sure to comment below. But if you found this video helpful in any way, just like drop a like. This has been it. I've been Lucky Warden signing out for the North Side YouTube channel. Yeah, I'm gonna play the track now. Enjoy.